Joyce Johnson is a faculty member at Madison S. Palmer High School in Marks, Mississippi, which is in Quitman County, about an hour or so south of Memphis. Uh, it is a school we've been involved with for four years. We've been delighted to, to, to be a part of that community. They have been very welcoming to us, as our schools have been all over the state. So we are delighted to welcome her. Thank you so much, Mr. Dolan. Madison S. Palmer High School is very proud to work with Mr. Dolan and Ms. Ia and the Global Teaching Project project to provide our students with STEM classes they need to achieve their full potential. We are entering the fourth year of the AP program at Palmer, where we will work with the Global Teaching Project to offer both AP Physics and AP Computer Science. We are grateful that our students have had the opportunity to work with great teachers and tutors from across the country to have access to excellent learning and teachers, I mean material, and to attend academic program at Ole Miss, Mississippi State, Jackson State, and Millsap College. We are also extremely proud of the hard work of our students. They have overcame huge challenges to accomplish great things. Even after our school building was closed due to the coronavirus, our students refused to give up and they kept working on their AP courses. I would now like to turn things over to one of our outstanding AP students, Darius Hudson, to introduce Mr. Cuban. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. And now I will continue by introducing Mr. Cuban. Mr. Mark Cuban is a technological pioneer, entrepreneur, Dallas Mavericks owner, and star of the television show, Shark Tank. Born and raised in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Mr. Cuban started building his business skills from an early age, selling garbage cans, stamps, and coins, and delivering newspapers to earn money. He attended Indiana University, where he studied business management and went on to start a number of prominent companies in a wide range of fields, including technology, media, and entertainment. Mr. Cuban is strongly committed to making sure that all students, no matter what their backgrounds, have access to a quality education and an opportunity to achieve their full potential. Mr. Cuban has also shown a strong interest in the work we are doing in our Mississippi Advanced STEM program. We are very grateful to Mr. Cuban for taking the time to visit us here in Mississippi. Please join me in welcoming our guest, Mr. Mark Cuban. I appreciate it, man. That's awesome. And Ms. Johnson, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, you guys should be extremely proud of what you're doing. And I, I really am appreciative that Matt invited me to be part of this. And, you know, I know we're going to be partnering to do a lot more going forward. So Matt, I'll, I'll let you tell me how we want to progress with questions. And first, well, let me just say one thing. My name is Mark. My dad is Mr. Cuban. So just call me Mark. I don't, I don't like anything formal. And you guys can ask me anything about anything or everything. I don't care. Nothing's off limits. Yes, well, well, thank you, Mark. And the, the way we're gonna do this with, with a large crowd, because we have over 100 people on the, the, the call, is what we've asked folks to do is to put questions in the chat box and one of our teachers, Anna Creekmore, who has very ably uh, performed this role with, with some of our other speakers, she's gonna essentially moderate and uh, ask these questions on behalf of the students and there'll be opportunity for, for interplay and follow up, et cetera. But, uh, Anna, are you, I don't see you on the screen. I know you're there somewhere. Yes, sir, I'm here. Hi, Anna. Hello, um, so we have a long list of questions. Um, so the first one that I wanna start with is actually from one of our teachers and I think it'd be a great way to start. What is your rise to the top story? Um, right just so that we have story. a idea of where you're coming from. Um, I, as Darius said, I grew up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, my dad did upholstery on cars. So if you had a rip in your car seat, you took it to him. Um, my mom did odd jobs. I have two younger brothers, Brian and Jeff. And, um, you know, I went to public schools like, like y'all. And, and really, I wasn't, I wasn't a great student. Um, I just tried to find my way like, like everybody else. But at the same time, I was always very into business. No matter how old I was, I was hustling and I was grinding. I, you know, when I was nine years old, I was selling baseball cards. When I was 12, I was selling garbage bags door to door. I, 
uh, to tell you the story, I, um, I remember asking my dad when I was 12 if I could get a new pair of basketball shoes. And he looks at me and he goes, you know what? <laughs> Those shoes on your feet look like they still work. When you have a job, you can buy any kind of shoes you want. And I'm like, dad, I'm 12. I mean, where can I get a job? He, he hooks me up with one of his friends who's got all these boxes of garbage bags. And literally my first company was going door to door in my neighborhood. And it went something like this. Hi, my name is Mark. Do you use garbage bags? No one said no. And so with that, that kind of gave me my first level of confidence. And from there, it was just one thing to the next. Um, when I got to high school um, in Pittsburgh, I kind of did it backwards. I was so into business that kind of like you guys, I wanted to take business classes, but they didn't have business classes at my school. And so, and this was before online. And so what did I do? I dropped out of high school and went to college and that I went to the University of Pittsburgh so I could finally take a business class and then from there transferred to Indiana. Um, now to fast forward, you know, why do you guys even know I exist and, you know, and how did I make money? Um, to reference what Matt said, after I got out of Indiana, I went down to Dallas, Texas, got a job selling computers and got fired and realized I wasn't a very good employee and started a technology company that connected PCs together. From there, I sold that and then ran into the friend that Matt mentioned, Todd Wagner, who I went to college with at Indiana University. And he was like, this was 25 years ago. And he was like, you know, there's this new thing called the internet. And there's got to be a way for us to listen to Indiana basketball games over the internet. And I was a tech geek, you know, I, I had a technology company and I'm like, okay, let me figure it out. And that was the first streaming company on the internet. And it was called AudioNet. And so what we're doing right now, streaming, the day before we started AudioNet back way back when, nobody was streamed at all. The day after, we were the very first streaming company and we built that up. And then um, five years later, it turned into a company, or four years later, it turned, to, turned into a company called Broadcast.com, which was the biggest streaming company pre-YouTube. Pre and then we sold it to Yahoo, if you guys know what Yahoo is. And so that's how I made my money. And then 20 years ago, I bought the Dallas Mavericks. And then 10 years ago, I um, got on Shark Tank. So is anybody out there watch Shark Tank? You guys yeah, better, you guys better. I want to see you all on Shark Tank. I need one of you all to take my place, right? I, I want to see the next shark coming from this program. I see you put your hands up, CJ. <laughs> okay, next question, Ann. Um, so this comes from Lillian, uh, from one of our students from home. She asked, what are some of your tips to stay motivated? Um, that's a great question. In terms of staying motivated, I'm very, very competitive. You know, I always, you know, to be in business, you have to always want to be learning. To be successful, in my opinion, to be successful at anything, you have to get excited about learning, something you all obviously are. That's why you're taking advanced classes. And so I always look at it that, if I'm not learning and I try to read, you know, whether it's online or books or magazines, I try to read two or three hours a day because I always wanted to be the best at whatever I do. And in order to be the best, it, it's no different than basketball or football or baseball. You know, when I talk to Luka Doncic, see here, I'm representing Luka for all you basketball fans. When I talk to Luka and, you know, you talk to him about being the best, he talks about, you know, working hard every single day. You know, we, we had two players from Mississippi. If y'all know who Monta Ellis is from, from Lanier High School and Eric Dampier from Monticello, um, both played for the Mavs. And when you talk to any professional athlete, you know, they'll always tell you that everybody's got talent. Everybody tells you, you they want to be the best. But if you truly want to be good at something, you really have to work hard every day and get better every day. And that's really what motivates me. Now, that's not to say that I don't have my bad days. I'm just like y'all. There's times when I have a book I got to read and I'm just staring at that book. And that book, those pages aren't getting read. I just stare at them. Or there's an assignment, there's something I have to do for my company, you know, or one of my companies. And I know I ha should have already had it done. We all go through those moments where, you know, you're, you're just, you just don't have it right that moment. 
But the great ones, the ones that really want to get out and, and get ahead, they'll find that time. They'll make it work somehow. And everybody's got that one little thing that motivates them, right? You know, what's that one little thing you have to tell yourself? Like, I'll sing a song to myself that I'm not going to repeat here. But I've got this little thing that I sing to myself that tells me, okay, get off your butt and get to work. You know, you know just when I had that down moment and you just have to find what that is for yourself. Okay, our next question is from Demiria from McAdams. She said, um, how do you decide what's a good investment whenever people come to you on Shark Tank? So on Shark Tank, um, the way I decide, the first thing I ask myself, when they walk on there and start pitching to us, if I'm thinking to myself, why didn't I think of this? That tells me it's a great idea and that gets me really excited. You know, there's so many things that we use at home, you know, Uber or whatever, that that are great ideas that come from anywhere and everywhere. So that's number one. Number two, I look at the person. Um, and I ask myself, you know, are they a learner? Because for all the reasons I just said, you have to be somebody who loves to learn. To me, that's the greatest skill I picked up in school that I really enjoyed learning, particularly, you know, particularly in college is really where I got excited about it. Um, and so is that person like, does that person love to learn? Because in business, life, business changes all the time. Look at the things we're going through right now. Look at, you know, look at the businesses around where you live right now. Some are open, some are closed, but they've all had to adjust. And so is this person agile and adaptive and like to learn? Third, um, do they like to sell? Because just like I sold garbage bags door to door, you know, you can't have a company that's successful unless you have sales. Someone's got to buy what you're selling. And then finally, the last thing I look for is how do they treat people? Because in order to be successful, you really have got to be able to look for what makes somebody special. We all, every single one of us, have that one thing that, we're really, that we really can be great at. And one of the greatest challenges in life is trying to find what that one thing is. And if you're the type of entrepreneur, if you're the type of business person that can not only see it in yourself, but see it in other people and help bring it out of them, then I know you can be successful. And so those are the things that I look for. Trendarius asked, what are some setbacks you've experienced and how did you handle them? Oh my goodness, setbacks. Um, I mean, I've gotten fired more times than I can count. Um, I've been broke when, you know, I moved to Dallas. Um, I had no money, no job. My car had a hole in the floorboard so that, you know, I was driving from Indiana to Dallas and I could see the, the, the lines and the road in between my feet. That's how bad it was. Um, and I lived six guys in a three bedroom apartment, didn't have my own room, didn't have anything, um, eating mustard and ketchup sandwiches. And even despite all that, I still kept my confidence and still, you know, really believe that if I worked hard and worked smart and kept on learning that I could accomplish what I set my mind to. And it took me a while. It wasn't easy, but, you know, I went, I bounced around when I was broke like that. I bounced around and went from job to job to job. And, and finally, you know, I got this one job that I kept in computers for nine months. But when I got fired that last time, it was like, okay, I'm a lousy employee. And that's when I started my first real company, Micro Solutions. And getting fired led me to create these great companies. And that's how you know who I am today. If I had never been fired, I still might be working there. And one of our tutors asked, what's an underrated skill that more people should invest in learning? So if I, I was starting all over today and I had to do one thing to try to start a company or really get myself ahead, and even if I was 16 or 14, do y'all know what Amazon Alexa is? Have y'all had a chance to play with one at all? If I was starting yes. from scratch, I'd find myself on Amazon Alexa and I'd learn how to program it. So if you ever talk to Amazon and you say, you know, to Alexa and you'll say, you know, Alexa, whatever, what's the weather? Alexa, what's the math score? And they answer, well, there's literally a way to program that just like it's got its own little programming language. But what people don't know is that it's really easy. It's really, really, really easy. It's easier than making a web page. but everybody thinks it's really hard. 
because you're just talking to a little device. And so what I would do is teach myself as much as I possibly can. I would, I would learn everything possible and I would go to the school, I would go to local businesses, I'd go to you know, families in the neighborhood that I knew had an Alexa, and I'd offer to set them up and configure them for their houses and their businesses. And now Alexa is in cars as well. So since people don't know how to make them work for themselves in their car, I would charge $25, $30 an hour just to configure their Alexa. And because nobody else around you is doing that, I guarantee you, you'd make some money. Our next question um, is kind of a mix from different people. What are some of the challenges that come with being one of the wealthiest people in America? None. None. I don't care what anybody says. Being rich is good. You know, I've been poor. I've been broke. I like being rich a whole lot better. Um, you know, that's just real world. And I'm not saying money is everything. It's not. If I know a lot of rich people that were sad when they were broke and are just as sad when they're rich. You know, who you are as a person is really what matters. And I've really, you know, I'm proud of the fact that, you know, my friends from high school, my friends from college, my friends, you know, when I was living six guys in a three bedroom apartment, they're all still my good friends. Um, and that's, you know, that's just who I am. And, and so, but I'm not stupid. <laughs> you know, I've tried to enjoy every single moment of all of this. Um, and so, no, there, there are no downsides. You know, some people, no, the, there's, there's so many things I can do. Like I can do this with you. I don't have to worry about things. I've come home and had my lights turned off. I've had my credit card cut up. I've had, you know, checks bounce, you know, and had negative bank accounts and gone to the ATM to look at my balance and it's been zero, you know, and, you know, I tell the story, I was 27 years old and I had my company and it was running, but I had put all my money in the company and I went to try to take out some money from my ATM um, and there was a zero balance at 27 years old. You know, and, and so I, I've been broke. Rich is a lot better. <laughs> CJ from Lake, he asked, when you started becoming successful, did you ever have to cut people off to focus on your goal? Yeah, you know, it, it's weird. It's a great question, too, because when I got really wealthy, um, it was weird, not just for me. It was, you know, it's obviously like, how the hell did I get here? And it's kind of strange and all that because I, I'd never grown up that way. But it was also different for my friends and family, you know, because it was, they didn't know how to act around me and they didn't know what they could ask for and not, not ask for. And I had some friends that just kept on asking for money. And I realized very quickly, they weren't really my friends. Because um, here's what I'll tell you. The people I was close to, I already knew when they were in trouble. I knew when they were in pain. They didn't have to ask me for help. I was already helping them. The people I didn't know, the people I wasn't close for, close to, they were the ones that, you know, that would ask me because they thought, you know, they would think, well, he has this much money. And if I only ask for this much, he's not going to know what's missing and da, 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 da. You know, those aren't friends. And I'll always help friends and family. And I always have but they know they don't have to ask because I already know that they need help and I'm out there helping them. Speaking of which, Kumaya asks, do you give out scholarships to high school students? That's a great question. I don't have a scholarship program per se, but I'm working real closely with Matt to see what we can do to expand this program. Great. Um, so Demiria asks, what are some book recommendations that you would have? Um, it really depends what you're, you're into. Um, to me, every book is a good book. There's, there's, you know, one of the things that I read that I try to convey to my kids, when you, if you don't read, you live one life. When you read, you live an unlimited number of lives. Every book you open opens up a new door. I used to go through bookstores when they had bookstores, and I would just sit there and look at all the magazines and, and glance at the magazines and just pull, pull books off the shelves that I couldn't afford and just try to read sitting in the bookstore because all it took was one idea, just one thing that would get me excited for, for either my business or a business I may want to start. Um, but in terms of books that I've read, oof, I, I like to read biographies. Like when I was a kid, there was a guy 
guy named Ted Turner who started TNT where they broadcast all the NBA games and he started CNN and he was just crazy, but he was an entrepreneur. So I love to read about him. Um, reading about Bobby Knight, a basketball coach at Indiana. So I just like to read biographies. And I also like to read different business books and technology books, but I'm weird, right? They're not the most exciting books. So I, I you know, just find anything, just get excited about reading and learning because once you do, anything is possible. It doesn't matter what anybody says, you know, the things that are tough when you were 14, 15, 16, and your friends don't think it's cool, or you know, you want to, you know, you want to get your get your Fortnite hours in, right? And you want to, you want to win, or Call of Duty, or Overwatch, whatever you play. You know, the the more you play, the better you get. Well, books and reading are the same way. The more you read, the better you get, and the easier it is, and the more interesting it is. And I'm not saying stop playing video games, but you know. I will also say this, and I learned this from my 10 year old son, Jake, you know, I always pushed only reading books because I think reading is great, but he would, I would ask him questions about business in at nine and 10, he always had the answers. I was like, Jake, what's, what's gross margin and Jake, what's, you know, net revenue and, and Jake, what's a royalty deal. And he answered boom, boom, boom. And I'm like, how did you learn all this? Cause I know you didn't read any of my books about it. And he, and he used YouTube videos. And so there are good YouTube videos that I'm sure, you know, Matt and Ms. Creekmore and all the teachers can help connect you to. And so understanding how you learn and what gets you most excited is important as well. You know, where just whatever gets you, however you learn, just pushing yourself to learn more and doing a little bit more and take, you know, finding that time where it's like, okay, you know, I've played Fortnite for an hour. Let me just take an hour just to learn something. That's, that's how you get ahead. And it, it's okay to read. It's great to read. I love reading. But at the same time, it's not a bad thing anymore to use YouTube and other online resources. Do you like to travel? And if so, what's your favorite place that you've been? Um, I like to travel. And I've been around the world. Um, my favorite place actually is the Cayman Islands, because it's really, really relaxing. And I can just lay on the beach and the reality is they have really great internet down there on the beach, unlike other places. So I could just chill and, and listen to music and, and get work done and read and all that. Um, my second favorite place, um, probably Moscow in Russia. It was just the most different, crazy place I've ever been in my life. I've been twice and I wanna go back again. How are you a part of the prep expert program oh from shark tank so um prep expert is an uh, entrepreneur named sean patel and so we're partners he came on shark tank and for all the reasons i mentioned earlier he was smart he was driven he was always learning he was caring um so he has a program that that helps with sat preparation they also now are doing tutoring and we're now working on scholarship programs for prep experts so you know, stay tuned um, for those of you who have to prepare for the SAT and ACT, if they still are going to have SATs and ACTs going forward. Um, we're doing some things there, but yeah, Sean's a great partner and he's done incredibly well. What advice would you give a high school student that had big dreams, but didn't necessarily know the path how to get there? I mean, that's normal. That is normal. What I would tell everybody and what I do tell everybody is you don't have to know what you're going to be when you grow up. You really don't. When you get to college, you don't have to have that one major. Now, if you already know what you want to be, great. You know, if there's something you get fired up about, like I got fired up about business, great. But let me just tell you, when I started at Pitt and then Indiana, I majored in accounting. And you know what I learned about accounting? I learned accounting, but I learned that it was boring, boring. And I couldn't stand it. I mean, literally, I thought, okay, I'm taking the language of business. If I know accounting, I know everything. Oh my God, I would fall asleep. I mean, I would be the kid, you know, you hear a thud in class, it was my head hitting the table in class. And so I had to try a lot of different things and just ended up graduating in general business. But I tried a lot of different things and talk, took a lot of classes. And by doing that, I found my way to technology. I didn't start off being big and cool into technology. I just happened to find my way there when I got a job, but it was only because I was willing to try different things 
that I found that I was good at technology. And again, I started off as an accounting major and had did no technology, none in high school and college. That just wasn't my thing. But when I got there and tried it, that's when I found it. And so what I always tell people, you know, it really, it's not even what college you go to. It's what you do when you're there, when you're there and it's all the things you try. You know, um, if I was starting today, I'd probably go to a community college my first two years because that's the only way I would be able to afford it because I had to pay for my own college. I had to work to pay for my own college. And it wasn't as expensive back then. I would go to a community college in a heartbeat take all my freshman and sophomore classes and take and try different types of classes there and then take my credits and transfer to some place where I can try different things. And then when you graduate, you still don't know what you want. To, you still don't have to know what you want to be when you grow up. You still don't. You can try different jobs. I started off as a bartender at night, you know, and then got that job um, selling software and PCs during the day. I had no idea what I wanted to be when I grew up. But I was, like I said, I was starving, so I had to work. And I had five roommates, so I had to do something. But I just tried all these different things. I didn't stress about it. I knew if I tried enough things, I would find that one thing that was special for me. And that's all, that's all you have to do. If you're excited about learning, if you're trying different things, you will find that one thing you're good at. Now, it might not be what you expect. It might not be what your parents or you know, the people in your family expect. But as long as you really get excited about being good at it, because I'm going to tell you a little secret. Nobody quits anything they're good at. When you find that thing that really gets you excited and you, you know, when I got into technology, I would like start work. I had to teach myself how to program, um, do software programming. And I would start and I would be working on projects and I'd look up thinking it was two hours later and it'd be 10 hours later. You know, it just time would fly because I really got excited about it. And when you find that thing you get excited about, time flies. And when you get good at it because you're excited about it, anything is possible. What has been your favorite investment? And another question was, what is your biggest investment from Shark Tank? Your favorite and your biggest. My favorite, they're all my children. They're all my favorites. There's no one that I get overly excited about. Um, and then my biggest was this company called um, Cycloramic. And Cycloramic had to change their business model a couple of times. But if you ever try to buy a car online and you go and it shows a video of the car that you can just use your finger to push it around and turn it around and see the inside of the car and the outside, they invented that and they sold it to a company called Carvana. And we all did pretty good. So that, that was my biggest win. What made you want to own the Dallas Mavericks? What made you want to own the NBA the team? The Mavs? So I've been a basketball junkie as long as I can remember. I mean, going back to five years old, you know, I, I, remember, I remember playing and getting shots up. And I just, you know, for those of you into basketball, you know, when I say ball is life, you know what I'm saying. And, you know, to this very day, to, for me to relax, I'll go out and just find a hoop and just get shots up that's who I am and that's who I've always been. And I was, um, I was a season ticket holder at the Mavs after I sold my company and they were awful. This was back in the 1990s and they, they hadn't even had a winning record in 10 years. And so when the chance came up to buy them, I went for it. I could afford it and I went for it. And the rest is history. And, you know, there's nothing better than you know, being able to hang out with Monte or Eric Dampier or Dirk Nowitzki or Luka Doncic or Kristaps Porzingis and go out there in the court and shoot with them or before home games, back when things were normal, I'd go out there, you know, two hours before the game, before all the players came out and I'd be getting shots up and, you know, playing shooting games and knockout and, and horse with these guys. And so, you know, I've just always been about basketball, and that's all, the only sport I considered buying a team in, and, and I'm glad I did. Who has been one of your biggest role, role models you've looked up to and why? Um, my dad. You know, my dad struggled um, his whole life. Um, his parents were immigrants. They'd had nothing. Um, you know, like I said, he just had a job where he did upholstery on cars. He lost his eye in an accident, you know, while at work. 
you know, because by trying to put staples into it, um, in, into upholstery, and he worked six days a week, you know, eight, 10, 12 hours a day, and just busted his butt for us, you know, me and my brothers and my mom, and, you know, just the way he treats people, and, and the way who he is towards everybody, and, and just his heart, you know, and, and just the fact that he just trusted me to go out there and try to get it done, that, you know, he's always been my role model and hero. What kind of classes should our students take to, if they wanted to become an entrepreneur? And um, kind of side note was how, it, how important is it to finish college and get your degree? So two questions there. Right now, there's nothing. If you're 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, you, you can be a business person right now if you want to, right? And just like I started with accounting and started taking business, you know, like I said, I dropped out of high school to take business classes. You know, there's no reason why you can't start learning, whether it's reading books about counting finance, you know, um, marketing or taking classes online. Any business class you take is a win for you. Because here's the thing. Let me tell you about competing in business. All of us, each and every you, me, everybody on this call has access to the exact same information. When I talk about learning and going online, I, I, your Internet's the same as my Internet, right? There is no article that I can get to that teaches me about technology or business that you can't get to. The only difference is I go do it. Now, it's a little bit different, obviously, because I have some experience and I, I can find different things. But when new technology comes out, I have to start from scratch just like you. So the first thing you do is find ways to learn about the things you're interested in in business. You know, find articles, find videos about marketing. Watch Shark Tank to learn more about business. These are the things that you can do. And part two to that, graduating from college, yes. And not to curse, but hell yes, right? Definitely yes. Because in college, you know, to make it through college means that you've really made a commitment to learning. And over and over and over again, you guys are hearing me say it's all about wanting to learn and loving to learn. And that's what's going to make you different. Everybody, look, if you all have played any sports, you know that everybody that walks onto a field or walks onto the court likes to think that they can play. And lots of people have talent. Lots of people have a lot more talent than you or I. But the ones that put in the time and put in the effort and get the shots up, you know, getting shots up and getting in your time and getting your work in on sports is the same as business. It's the same as school. When you put in the time, you get the results. And the people who put in the time end up being the most successful. And that's what you just got to do. And that graduating from college is one of those things. Don't let anybody tell you differently. Doesn't matter which college you graduate from, but when you graduate from college, you have the biggest edge ever. What are some things that worry you or keep you up at night? Um, I'm a parent, I got three kids. I got a 16 year old daughter and a 13 year old daughter. That's enough said right there. <laughs> Um, and obviously all the COVID stuff and my family's health. Um, you know, that's just part of being a parent. Um, you know, when I was a kid, what worried me the most was would I, would I be successful? You know, what would I be? What would my future be like? Just like I'm sure all of you are worried. And, you know, I have my ups and downs, you know, whether it was grades, whether it was other stuff, you know, things I did right, things I did wrong. Um, and I, I never was certain that I was going to make it. But every time I applied myself and learned, I realized that that pushed me forward and just made me closer to, to something good happening. And so just like all of you, I worried about the same things. And those of you who are parents know what I'm saying when, you know, the number one thing is my family's health. And, and after that, just trying to, you know, teach my kids and raise them the right way. How do you manage your time and how has that affected your personal success? You know, I, I manage my time by really focusing on my to-do list. I have things that I have to do every day and I try to get them all checked off. And like I said earlier, I make sure I, I make time to always be learning something, you know, and take put aside two or three hours and 
you know, to, to really try to get ahead because I know that there are a bunch of people in this program that want to start businesses and kick my butt and kick the butt of my businesses. And the only way I'm going to stay ahead of y'all is by working hard. Um, and so that motivation, that competitiveness keeps, helps me stay focused on accomplishing the things I need to do. And I got to tell you, well, like when I was in ninth grade, my grades suck. And my dad was like, okay, you know, I guess you don't want to go to college. I guess you don't want to do anything but do what I do. And, you know, he used to take me to where he worked and they would pay me five bucks to sweep the floor all day, you know, not because he wanted me to earn the money, but because he wanted me to see that when you, when you have your job, you have to do your job physically and you come home exhausted because, you know, and you're mentally exhausted because you're not using your brain. He wanted me to see how difficult it is and how difficult he had it. And, you know, that motivated me in ninth grade to start working harder. Um, so, you know, that, that's how I stay focused, remembering that and wanting to stay ahead and, and keeping to my to-do list. Darius asks, if you could start over with the knowledge you have now, is there anything you would change? And if so, why? You know, I probably um, would do it all the same because it worked. Um, <laughs> But I might have been nicer to people when I first started my first companies. I think that was probably the biggest adjustment I've had to make. I was so go, 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 go motivated that sometimes, you know, at work, I pushed people maybe more than I should have and wasn't, didn't listen as well as I should, you know. Um, but that's just part of, of maturing and gaining wisdom. I was in my 20s and, you know, there's a lot I didn't know that I know now. Do you have a favorite quote or life motto? That's a great question. Um, I got a couple of them. Number one is how you do anything is how you do everything. And if you think about it, you know, like if, I, if, if I'm doing something and there's something I didn't pick up after myself, that's what I always say to myself. How you do anything is how you do everything. Or if I don't finish a project or if I don't finish something on my to-do list, I just remind myself how you do anything is how you do everything. Meaning that if you only do something halfway or partially and you don't finish what you set out to do on the little things, you're probably not going to finish in um, what you set out to do on the big things. So paying attention to the little details gives you the habits on how to do the big things right. What are some um, characteristics of business proposers that immediately turn you off? Um, when they tell me a long backstory, you know, if I'm, I see so many proposals and when I say backstory, if you start, if you start a proposal or pitch to me with, so when I was a kid, I broke my hand playing football and I wanted to be a football player, but I wasn't. Um, but then my mom told me, that I should probably try to do this and then that, you know, and they just go on and on and on and on. Um, that's really not relevant to why we're here. You know, if you're going to make a pitch to me, if you're going to propose something to me, get right to it. Get to what you're trying to accomplish, not just what your idea is, because everybody's got ideas. Everybody on this call, every single one of you has had a business idea. And, it, and you get that feeling in your stomach is like, ah, this is the big one, right? I know this is a great idea. And then you tell your friends and they say, oh yeah, that would be cool. I'll buy it. And then you do nothing. Right. And so you've got, you, you've got to really get focused on, on what you're going to do and, and how you're going to do it and, and making things happen. And so don't pitch me on who, you know, what happened to you in your past, pitch me on what you are actually doing and how you're going to make this business successful. Okay, I want to do two more questions. Okay. The first is being both a media personality and a successful businessman, which one would you say is more rewarding or fun? Um, I'd say being a successful business person because it's my personal accomplishments and I can have an impact with what I've been able to accomplish. Being on TV and you know being in movies and all that kind of stuff is fun. No question, it's fun. But it also means everybody knows who you are. And it means everybody's always coming up to you. And so it's hard for me just to go places and chill. And so if I go out of the house, I always have to like anticipate that I've, I've got to, you know, know that people are going to come up to me. And during this COVID period, 
it's crazy. You know, <laughs> people will come up and want to hug me like there's nothing going on. And, and so I think I'll take just the business side of it as opposed to the, the celebrity side of it. Okay. Um, last question. What is something that you do every day to make yourself better? Learn, read every single day, every single day. Like I said earlier, guys, I'm going to give you the secret of success. If you learn every single day more than the people around you, you have an advantage. Look at, the, look at the kids you go to school with. How many of them are putting in the effort to learn every day? How many of them are working as hard as you are every day to get smarter and get better at what you do? That's the way the whole real world is. And if you put in that extra time, you always have an advantage. Every single technology, I, this is what I would tell myself. And this is the best way to end it. When, when I was just getting started, remember I told you I didn't take technology in school. I, didn't te I had to teach myself how to program. I didn't take any, you know, any of those classes, anything. But what I told myself, every time something new comes out, there's the people who invented it and there's everybody else. And I'm tied with everybody else. And so if I work harder and smarter and dig in deeper, then I'm going to know more than the everybody else's and I can be successful at this. And once you're good at something, like I said, nobody quits anything they're really good at. And so that's, that's, what, that's what fires me up. That's what keeps me motivated. That's what keeps me going. Because I also know that each and every one of you can be somebody that I can do business with. And in order for me to be able to keep up with you, I got I to gotta know stuff that I otherwise might not know. I got to know how TikTok works. Right. I got to know, you know, I got to know renegade, renegade, you know, I got to be able to keep up with all these things because that's part of the technology, you know, world. And, and that's social media. The way I dealt with social media is not the way you dealt with social media. And I got to be able to keep up. So the things that I never thought that I would be paying attention to are part of the things I have to learn, which means if I'm not doing this every day, then I'm falling behind. Just learn every day. Well, well, Thank you, Mark. On that note, I will let you know that 9 a.m. tomorrow, we are uh, having our physics class. As cool. we are dur during the summer, uh, we're having our AP physics class, 9 a.m. Everyone on the call is going to be back on the physics class. Uh, even though it's summertime, even though there's a pandemic going on, even though that it may be a big problem to, to get to the internet to make it work, uh, at 9 a.m., we're, we're back at it. So. Uh, Congratulations, guys. That's awesome. That is awesome. You guys are my inspiration. That's why I work with Matt, right? You guys are the future. You're the people that I look up to. When you get out there and do things, despite other people telling you you can't do them, you do them. Despite not knowing if you can do them, you fight through and you do it. That's what being successful is all about. That's what great people do. That's what changes this country for the better. Not because of what I do, it's because of what you do. That's why I'm so proud and so excited to be talking to each and every one of you. Because what you do is what's going to make, the, make this world, this country great. That's just the reality. So be there for that class. I already know you'll be ready for that class tomorrow. But congratulations and good luck, everybody. And thank you so much for having me on. Well, thank you, Mark. And I, I know I'm speaking for everybody. This was terrific. It was inspirational. I was getting private messages during this. Uh, this is great. I'm inspired. Uh, uh, other people were telling me how they were inspired. So this is wonderful. We really appreciate your time. And uh, I guess this means everyone has to root for the Mavericks starting the end of the month. That's right. That's right. I mean, Mississippi doesn't have an NBA team. Come on now. Yes, yes. Well, it, it, Memphis is close, but, you know, uh, not close, Dallas enough. Is close too. <laughs> Dallas is close too. So, well, thank you very much, Mark. We really appreciate it. Thank you to everyone for coming out. This has been uh, a terrific session. Uh, we're excited about tomorrow. We're excited about the rest of the summer. We're excited about the, the year coming up. We're not going to let any of this stuff uh, going on stop us. And uh, this has been a great session. So with that, we will let Mark go and we appreciate Thanks everybody. Join Good luck tomorrow. Good okay. luck with everything. Take care. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mark.